Thank you, Seekers. I'm Nick. I promised you guys that the second we got any new M.2 drives, we'd smash out a video as quickly as possible and let you guys know if it's any good. Now, the problem with that is at the moment, Flash Storage has started to see a bit of a surge in price given there's a bit of a supply shortage. And with saying that, the prices will eventually come back down. But the real question is, is now a good time to buy storage or should you wait? I mean, I would say that if I didn't care about your money, but I do because we're about facts. We're not about speculating about flash memory. So let's talk about the facts. Transcend sent over one of their 220S 1TB NVMe M.2 drives for us to check out. So yeah, let's uh, use some facts and see if this thing is worth the asking price. Transcend's been doing flash memory for almost longer than anyone else, so they know a thing or two about flash memory. And from personal experience, both working in IT and data center for many, many years, you notice that they're actually used quite a lot in the OEM market. However, over the last few years, uh, they've tried to make more consumer facing products. And yeah, they've started to really try and enter that market way more aggressively. The Transcend 220S comes in a few different flavors. They have a 256 gig version, a 512 gig version, a one terabyte version, and a two terabyte version of the drive. And the one we're talking about in this video is obviously the one terabyte version. Now, I could just read out a whole product sheet and talk about this drive, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna read you an excerpt of the first line of the product page and it's actually something that really stood out to me personally and it's something that I think most people actually probably gloss over when they're looking at buying this drive. And I think this is what Transcend is using to really justify the pricing of this drive. And, and the, the line reads a little something like this. Transcend's PCIe SSD 220S aims at high-end applications such as digital audio, such video production, gaming, and enterprise use. Now, remember when I talked about my personal experience seeing it used in data center? We're gonna touch on this later. I'm just gonna be planting this seed here so you guys have a bit of stuff to think about in the meantime. The one terabyte 220S has a DDR3 DRAM cache and has random slash read write performance of around 340K IOPS read and 310K IOPS write. Now the drive is also fully PCIe Gen 3 compatible and it should also work on Gen 4 slots too. And we did test this and it works perfectly. It comes with a five year limited warranty and should be good for around 2200 TBW. The 220S should also give you around 2 million hours of use before any type of failure. And that's around 228 years, so way longer than you and I are probably ever gonna live. Now on the control side, and a bit more techie for those people who might actually be interested, it's using the Silicon Motion SM2262EN controller. It's a pretty common controller, and it's fully NVMe 1.3 certified. It's also used in a bunch of other drives like the ADATA SX8200 and the HP EX920 as well. And there's a lot of info on this controller out there, so I'll drop some links down below if you wanna see some resources if you're super interested on storage controllers and how they work and all that stuff and we'll probably do some more videos about this stuff as well. Now, they also have a little bit of software called SSD Scope which is actually pretty handy if you're migrating your system to another drive. It also allows you to update the drive's firmware, another enterprise-y kind of thing. And yeah, it's got a whole bunch of drive info that usually wouldn't be that easy to access and it seems like another pretty enterprise solution to me. And all that's all well and good and to be honest, it's a bunch of stuff that you can just read on the Transcend website, but yeah. That's not what we do around here. So we did what we always do with our drives. We put it up against 11 other M.2 drives that we've got available. And yeah, from the crazy amount of testing, we know how well all of these drives do. And the way we actually do these tests is we fill the drives with 50% capacity. We run five different types of tests 20 times, and we calculate the average speed of all of those 20 tests conducted. We run a crystal disk mark test, of a one gig test, a four gig test, a 16 gig test, a 32 gig test, and a 64 gig test. So as you know, this stuff takes a long time to put together. And yeah, we give you the results of the other drives just to give you a little bit of context with how this Transcend drive will go. And we only did thermal testing on the 220S because it's the focus of the video. And to be honest, the thermals on Gen 3 drives don't really impact performance that much. And it's, uh, it's just really not that relevant. And the only drives that we test are the drives that I have. And if I didn't test something, then I clearly don't have one, so I can't test it. So please don't ask why I didn't end up testing a certain drive. And also, most of the drives that you're seeing in this video are Gen 3 drives. There are a few Gen 4 drives down the bottom. So 
yeah, just exercise a little bit of common sense if you see one drive blasting another drive in the lower section of the graphs. And yeah, it's a lot of information to unpack. So I'm gonna see you guys on the other side and then we'll chat. From all that testing, it's pretty clear that the Transcend 220S 1TB isn't the fastest of the lot. It's pretty close to being the fastest, but I suspect it's going to be the most reliable of the lot. And there's a lot of variation in these drives and they all come at different price points for different use cases. And it's a pretty good sample of drives you might actually consider buying. And there are other things to talk about with this, like the varying amounts of cash and um, some don't use cash at all and the different sizes, but like I said, I can only provide information and the data that I have available to me. And as usual, take everything that you see in all of these graphs with a grain of salt, 
because these are results that we recorded. So your results might actually vary. And now the next thing I was curious about was the Transcend 220S doesn't include any heatsink, which is, again, it's pretty normal for Gen 3 drives not to do this. And I tested with and without a heatsink and the numbers were exactly the same within a margin of error. So there's just nothing to report there. It's, uh, it's pretty boring. Flash storage has got an optimal operating temperature. So hot isn't always good. Cold isn't always good. Somewhere in the middle is usually about the optimal performing temperature for flash memory. Now, remember at the start of the video how I talked about uh, data center and enterprise? Here's the deal with the 220S. It's a data center grade drive that they would usually provide to OEMs and they've rebranded it for consumers. Now, how do I know this? Well, there's a few telling signs and these things are basically, they're just facts, okay. Remember, we're always gonna be talking about facts. Now, if we look at the mean time between failure, it's about 228 years. Now, the average for M.2 drives is around 175 years, so durability is part of its sales pitch. Uh, also, if we look at the terabytes written, the average is usually less than half of the 220S. The fact that it uses DDR3 DRAM cache with parity checking is actually another sign as well. And the fact that they advertise this as being suitable for RAID arrays, that kind of solidifies it. And the last sign is the price. Now the one terabyte Transcend 220S is going for around 197 USD or around 276 Australian dollars at the time of filming. Now it's considerably more expensive than a stack of the other one terabyte drives we've checked out recently, but I can tell you for a fact, it's because of its durability. Now for production environments like the data center or high-end workstations where RGB and all this flashy branding and all that stuff doesn't mean a whole lot. I can see that the 220S might actually be worth considering. However, for the regular consumer, for someone who just wants to use it for games and to store non-mission critical data, I think there's more affordable options like the WD Blue SN550. Seriously, that drives a really, really good bang for buck. And if you wanna see our review of that drive, you can check it out up there somewhere. So, I mean, what, what's the point of this drive? Well, I think the 220S is a really interesting drive. It's probably not for the regular consumer because of the price. It's a bit on the steep side, but if you're after a drive with durability in mind, at the end of the day, with all of these PC products, you get what you pay for. And that's where I can really see the 220S really shining for durability. That's it. That's the bottom line. And those are the facts. Anyways, let me know what you think of the 220S and what drives you guys are using at the moment. I'm curious to see what everyone's using. I've been trying to get my hands on a lot of the drives that you guys have been suggesting in the comments. I am really trying to do it so we can build up this huge database of drives and we can do like a huge roundup at the end of the year to see who made the best and most affordable drive of the year. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. Hit the dislike button twice. If you want to get early access to videos just like this one, we're on Flow Plan. Also, if you want to support the channel, join button, all that stuff. You guys know how this works. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And again, I just really want to reiterate, like this drive is more expensive. And the, the, the literal reason is this is a rebranded enterprise drive. So they need to recoup some of the costs from that. The DDR3 DRAM cache, uh, it used to be cheaper. It's actually more expensive now because it's more expensive to produce DDR3 memory. So yeah, there's a lot of factors that make this more expensive. I personally wouldn't use a drive or buy a drive like this if I was buying it for a game drive. It's just not worth that premium. But if you're looking for something for a workstation that you have uh, high hopes of it not failing, I think the 220S is probably something to consider. You are getting what you pay for, the drive is pretty fast, and yeah, it's not bad, it's a good size. Thanks for watching.